and also vast expansion of mobile services. 5G services utilizes 28 and 38 gigahertz frequency band to achieve high data speeds and also reduce hardware complexity. In the today's webinar, also with this uh, a little um, briefing about the seminar. In the today's webinar, we have invited four eminent speakers. They are experts in their own fields. The first speaker is Professor C. Murali. He will speak on 5G and beyond. The second speaker is Brigadier Dr. V. B. Abraham. He will speak on mobile and wireless communication and Ebola. Both the speakers, I am fortunate enough, they are very, my, my very good friends, and I shared general council of I, and governing council of I for two terms with them. The third speaker is our state committee member, is my colleague, Professor D. Radha Krishna. He will speak on 5G super technology. And the fourth one is none other than our chairman, Engineer Brahma Redigaru, present chairman. He will speak on 5G wave, future of India's phonetic post COVID 19. My sincere request to the speakers they may limit their talk to 20 to 25 minutes so that we may finish yeah. this talk by some two hours at least it will take. Yeah. So okay. This is actually, uh, oh yeah, of course, I don't know whether the chief guest is available. He has come. Uh, no, sir, he's having another uh, meeting. He is not coming. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let me go for the calling for the speaker, sir. Is it not? Yeah. Okay. Can I introduce the Professor Sri Morali? Yes. Okay, sir. Brahma Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Professor Murli is an academician, educationist. He received his BE mm -hmm. degree in electronics from UVCE, Bangalore University, and ME degree in electronics from Bits Pelani. He has more than four decades of academic experience as a lecturer. Mm -hmm. Professor. Why so? He has served in the BOS member, BOE chairman, advisory committee member for UG and PG. He has served MS Ramaya Institute of Technology, Bangalore, for 34 years, and Ramaya University of Applied Sciences, Bangalore, as associate academic registrar in faculty of engineering and technology. He has worked as an expert for UPSC, NBA, ACTE and professions at IASC. His areas of interest are microwave engineering, computer network, and wireless mobile network. He has authored books on computer communication network and data communication and computer networks. Professor Murali, <coughs> yes, IETE Bangalore Center as EC member, joint secretary, of course, as a he served as a council member, governing council member, three terms, of course, that I have also pointed out. I have shared with him also. Oh, no. Chairman and vice president also. Under his guidance, various activities like syllabus revision, introduction to CGPA system, publication of lab manuals, <laughs> dual programs, and IS activities were initiated successfully executed. Professor Murli has, in, has invited talk, presented technical papers, keynote address, conducted workshops, seminars of, at IET, University of State, and national levels. Awards received, recipient of Devang Mehta National Education Award as the best professor in electronics and communication in August 2017. IETE BR Patra Memorial Award 2018. He has provided 
consultancy in the development of microwave trainer kits, fabrication of teaching and training aids. He is also listed in the directory of Hindu American, who is who publica who publication in the biological information South and Asia publication. So such a great person actually among us. Invite Murli, please. You go ahead with your talk, sir. Hello. Hello. Murali sir, you can you can take your talk, sir. Then I want to. Nim, it is a script. Nim, presentation of the Okay. Hello? Sir, go ahead, sir. Oh, you can hear me, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello, Murli, sir, I am Mahesh. Sir, can I present your presentation, sir? So, yes. Slides are coming, isn't it? Yes, sir, coming. Present, sir, your presentation. Good evening, all of you. Good evening. Shall I start? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Good evening. And thanks for inviting me to be a part of your program. Distinguished <coughs> members of Institution of Engineers and ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be a part of you. Even though I am from IET, but I have got good friends here, Subhi Reddy and then Brigadier Abraham <laughs> and Narayan, Lakshmi Narayana, who are also from my IT colleagues in the Governing Council. So it is nice to be with all of you. So it's an interaction between IET and IE, so that you will be having better interaction in future. So the outline looks like this. There will be an introduction, generational evolution, and what is the vision. And we are going into high frequency ranges, as it was told, that is a million ways. What are the new horizons? Always architecture we have to look into whenever you go into the new technology. Hello, this is slide is gone. No, got it. Some problem? No problem. No, yes. Slide has come, sir. You have to move the move next to next slide. Did you are in the first slide. One one minute. Manusha, the move Can you hear me? Yes. 
Now, standardization is one of the major requirement when you are thinking of at a global level. And some of the indicators, performance indicators of 5G applications and what are the enabling technologies. And at the end, we look into a glimpse of 6G, which is all, which has, the research has already started and some effects of radiation and conclusion. So as it was told earlier, there is a continuous expansion taking place in mobile and wireless networks and a generational evolution is occurring once in a decade. And this era is upon us. It has penetrated into our daily life like any other technology and it has become a part and parcel of our life. If you look into the evolution, it started with 1G, that was in 1980s, mostly unlock, unlock com communication, 2G digital technology started, which was basic phone with tens of kbps data rate and for mostly for voice communication. And later came the third generation and it was having some future phones and improved versions so that the email also can be sent and it has had better data rate. But 3G never came into being as it was expected. 4G took its place and whatever we are having at present is with a smartphone or which will be giving access to high speed network. And what we are thinking of in future is 5G and beyond the 6G, which will be really evolutionary and then it will be having revolutionary subject services. So if you look into the 5G, it is expected to give 1 to 10 Gbps internet speed and it is expected to increase the network capacity more than 100 folds and it is supposed to provide fiber link type of experience with wireless connection and IoT is coming in a big way that is internet of things and it is expected to complement and data traffic will be several extra byte and there will be heavy volume of data. And the number of devices connected will be extremely large, hundreds of billions, and the data rate continues to grow. Uh, the requirement is there for the data rate to grow. And one of the major thing with 5G expected is response time between the two devices, which we call it as latency or round trip delay. It will be one milliseconds as compared to 50 milliseconds presently and 500 milliseconds earlier with 3G. Now, unlike the previous generations, the user requirement is the major thing when we are thinking of 5G. So it is more of user centric and there should be a paradigm shift which will be included high frequencies and massive bandwidth. That's what is expected. And the base stations will be having density will be heavy and the device density and it will be having the number of unprecedented number of antennas the antenna technology is one of the major things required for 5G and beyond. And there will be high level of flexibility and intelligence important. And the spectrum regulation is to be rethought and has, has to be improved. And more consideration is also required for energy and cost efficiency because we are looking towards green technology. There will be always a vision required. And this vision is to increase the wireless data rate and bandwidth, coverage and connectivity for the entire group, including everything and human beings. And the round trip latency has to be reduced and the energy consumption has to be reduced. These are the visions. And major requirements are the one to 10 Gbps data rate in real networks and round trip latency, one millisecond, high bandwidth per unit area and a very large number of connected devices. And almost 100% coverage is expected from any time to anywhere. That's what is expected from 5G. And energy usage by 90% has to be reduced. And that's where green technology comes into being. And battery life has to be increased because of more user-centric applications. And the availability perceived is supposed to be 99.39% and 5G intelligence network should be practically always be available. So now these things are really challenging for this wireless industries, academia, research organizations and other collaborating agencies, they are all working towards 
the wireless systems. So for this, we have to go to the higher frequency of microwave regions. The capacity is to be increased. So the spectral efficiency, bandwidth and cell size will be different. And presently, whatever you are using is at the lower frequencies of microwaves, that is from 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. And what we require for 5G is going into millimeter range that is beyond 3 gigahertz. And frequencies below 6 gigahertz are suitable for macro coverage, that is when you are going up to around 0.5 to 2 kilometers radius. And when you go to high frequencies, the area that can be covered reduces or it will come to a micro coverage going up to several tens of meters. And if you go still further, it may come to 10 meters radius. So we are looking into different challenges when you are going to have different frequency ranges. So if you look towards the spectrum, whatever we are using is on the left hand side, that is beach front spectrum. But we are having enormous availability of 252 gigahertz in three chunks. And some are not useful because of absorption bands, but we are having more than 250 gigahertz available at high frequencies, which can be utilized for 5G transmissions. But millimeter waves have always some problems because of high path loss as the frequency increases, attenuation increases, and the thermal noise and signal to noise show problem will come because of wider bandwidth. The signal attenuation because of water vapor, oxygen, and atmospheric conditions that also will be different. And this has to be taken care of. And the architecture and antenna structure will be completely different from whatever we had seen with 4G and below technologies. The architecture is always to be looked upon. What we expect is high bandwidth and massive connectivity because everything will be connected in addition to the human beings, low latency, less than one milliseconds. The availability should be there, nearly 100%. The network connections and shared infrastructure. And once again, security is one of the major things when we think of the connectivity to everything and everyone. And that's where the, we have to think nearly in a different way because of the redesigning of services, architecture, interfaces, and non-access data protocols, and the procedures and algorithms, everything has to be thought of in a different way. So there is a paradigm shift when you think of the architecture as compared to earlier generations. What we are looking towards is a user-centric architecture as compared to the base-centric architecture earlier. Earlier we had BSEs, that is base stations, centers controlled by MSCs. And now what we are looking towards is a user-centric. Here, the user is also a part of the network and he can be utilized for storage, relaying and content delivery as compared to the earlier networks. So that's what is expected that is shown here. Device to device communication also will be coming into picture. So when you think of the 5G, it has got multi-tier architecture. As I told you earlier, if you are going to different frequency ranges, it can be a macro scale or a micro cell or a femto cell. So when you are looking towards different sizes of cells, the multi-tier architecture comes into picture and we are looking towards device to device connection also or networking. And the thinking is more of quality of experience as compared to quality of service. So that's where the 5G system has to be thought of in a different way. A multi-tier network is always thought of such that the different size of cells can be taken into consideration. So that is shown in the diagram where you can see that device to device connection is there, or you may be having a femto cell, a very small cell, or a macro cell, a bigger cell, or a pico cell, or the different types of connections you can look into. So it's a combination of different size of cells that working at different frequencies as it is shown in the next diagram. So we'll be thinking more towards automation with 5G applications, then machine to machine communication comes into picture with artificial intelligence helping in a big way and device to device communication. IoT is going to play a big role and internet of vehicles, that is another big applications will be having high dense small cells and it may be a moving cell with the vehicles or the bullet train moving at more than 500 kilometers per hour. So we'll be looking towards space division multiple access techniques and the antenna technology has to be completely thought of in a different way. So which will be looking towards massive MIMO that is multiple input 
multiple output connections with beamforming requirements. And the cloud computing is going to help in a way for storing and then helping the 5G architecture or networks. So this is another way of looking towards where you can see that one is operating at 80 gigabits per second, another is 50 gigabits per second, and then vehicle to industry or vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to device, you can see that anything to anything connect can be connected. So whatever you tell that can be the application. So the requirement is quietly different as compared to whatever you have now. So that it is really a challenge and there's a big horizon beyond 2020. Standardization is always required. IMT 2020 has been taken into considerations and 5G and all standard has already come, which will be on the lines of 4G LTE, that is. And there are two releases already. 3GPP has released, release 15 and release 16. The 16 was issued in July 2020 and two frequencies are used. One is the frequency range below 6 gigahertz, another is at frequencies beyond 24. And the new release also being thought of for standardization enhanced in 2022 and advanced that is release 18. So if you look into the applications, anything you can call is, can be thought of with 5G systems. That's what is expected. But there are two major services. One is mobile internet already we have got, but more things can be added with more flexibility and then nearly 100% connectivity. Another one is Internet of Things. Earlier, we were connecting only human beings to human beings. Now, we are looking towards connecting everything on Earth. That is Internet of Everything. So you can see that the various, whatever you put that can be thought of. So that's where the services are never ending. But when you look towards services, different types of requirements are there with respect to data rate and latency. Not all services require same level of data rate or latency for some connections that is for example meter reading you need not have high speed applications it is a low speed application whereas when you go for a video monitoring high speed requirements are required so depending upon the requirement the speed requirement also changes and as i told you earlier cloud computing is going to help in a big way so that digital information can be stored and processed can be utilized in a big, better way and when you're thinking towards machine to machine communication or other applications, there can be two ways of thinking. One is delay sensitive, vehicle to vehicle co communication. When you're looking towards automation and automated vehicles will be required delay sensitive requirement and non-delay sensitive when you're looking towards just like meter reading and other applications in our daily life. So the requirements goes on changing. So always look into, we look into the performance indicators. The, there are three efficiencies defined. That is bits per hertz per cell. Earlier we were talking about bits per hertz. Now we are looking to per unit cell or per unit area or so. Another one we are looking towards is energy efficiency is bits per joules. Now we are looking into the energy consumption and then greening conditions or green technology. So that's why the cost per bit and energy per bit requirement has to be reduced enormously. When you look towards the applications, it is five scenarios can be thought of. One is amazingly fast, because whatever we are having is less than 100 Mbps, maybe tens of Mbps we are having with most of the mobile thinking. So the it will be more than 100 Mbps or going towards gigabits per second is amazingly fast. And great services in a crowd so when you are, it may be a 20-20 match or a big crowd in football. So then services should be as good as whenever you're having in other places. The computing has to be thought of for supporting Internet of Things. Real-time and reliable connection is one of the major requirement. But always experiences will tell us whether it's okay or not. So one of the things is dense scenario, residential areas offices, shopping malls, where dynamic changes are taking place, depending upon the crowd, the connections has to be given and it should be always be connected. Sports stadium for different requirements, subway system, that is underground systems, normally the connection will not be there when we are going in the tube railway. 
So this has to be always present, big outdoor gatherings, train station, highway and high speed train. So all these things are various scenarios that can be thought of. So if you look towards applications, there may be three ways of looking. One is extreme mobile broadband condition. Another is massive scale communication. Another one is reliable low latency service. So earlier, or whatever we had was human to human. Now with the internet of things coming to picture, it will be human to machine and later machine to machine or machine to human beings. So you can see that everything on earth can be connected. No, the more than 100 billion connections may be there when real 5G applications come into picture. So whatever you say, that will be the application. That's what is expected. So there are, as new technologies are required to take care of these things. The one other thing is going into high frequency range of microwaves using millimeter. And we are going into sub-millimeter also when you go to 6, 6G, massive MIMO. MIMO is already there, but it is going coming in a big way. So the real antenna theory has to be having a different type of changes when we look towards the 5G applications. Earlier, we were talking about orthogonal OFDM. Now we are talking of going towards non-orthogonal transmission where the sporadic traffic is there and asynchronism is another thing. So for we are going towards non-orthogonal transmission, which was not talked about in the earlier stages because of YFDM, but it is going to come in a big way. So because we will be having dense deployment of networks or in small cells, so we have to look towards different techniques, high frequency communication going into millimeter and submillimeter conditions, full duplex operation will give you a better service and new coding and modulation techniques have to come so that you can utilize it in a better way to have the per bit how much data rate you can send. Smart devices are coming already coming and it will become much more smarter device to device communication. So if you look towards massive MIMO, you can see that with 5G connections, the base stage is also less though. We'll be having different beams to take care of one at the ground and one at the top floor. So connection will be there for almost all the people, even if it's a hundred story building. Another application is device to device communication. Earlier it was human being to human being. Now we can see the devices also, they are going to play, as I told you, it is device centric architecture. So you can see that device to device communication in addition to the base station to base station relaying. So you can see that the scenario is completely different. The another one which is coming in a big way is machine to machine communication with artificial intelligence playing a big role. And you can see that the things are becoming much more smarter and with IoT and IO, Internet of Everything coming to picture. So you can see that home and industry automation, road and traffic management, it will become more automated. Healthcare is going to play, it's going to play a big role and metering for home purposes and infrastructure management for different cases. So another one is internet of vehicles as we had seen earlier. So you are going to have more automated vehicles. So it involves huge data, big data, which is to be processed and the delivery should be highly reliable in time, in real time, and it should be safe and secure also so that we can reduce or better traffic management and reduce collision probabilities. As I have was told earlier, it is supposed to complement IoT. They go together. IoT, artificial intelligence, and 5G, they go together. And the IoT involves RFID sensors, actuators, and other IoT chips. I will not go into the IoT. But it consists of billions of devices, connected people. So when you are, we are not talking about 7 billion people. No, we are talking about at least each person having seven devices connected, at least 50 billion connections. That's what is expected by another five to 10 years. That is by 2025, IoT will be going to play a big role. And so that's where you can see that any connecting anything, anyone, anytime, any place. So here we talk about everything, smart, smart city, smart vehicles, smart healthcare system, smart grids for power, smart farming, smart logistics, smart industries. And so everywhere you are going to add smartness because the things are also becoming much more smarter with the IoT or IOE. So there are various use cases. Some are shown here. One is vehicle telematics. 
another one is in vehicle in infotainment so one is from visible to visible what we are having is a real world another one is a virtual world coming to picture in a bigger way so we are going to have the connection between real and virtual world so that's what is expected in future with later technologies coming to picture and now we have always a problem of transmission distribution generation is always there but transmission distribution is a big problem and this can be taken care of with smart grid automation so in addition to the power lines coming the signal lines also will be going when 5g connections come so that you will be having less losses and there will be no shortage of power as we face now because of losses of due to various factors so mobile and collaborative robots already robots are playing a big role in industrial automation and it will be cobots also where some human intervention also can be there the cobotics will be there and surveillance is going to play a big role and 5g will give more accuracy as compared to whatever you have now so road traffic management as it was told earlier it will be giving more intelligent mobile communication that is with for traffic management so that the collision will be reduced and it will be much more managed in a better way so that's what was some brief about 5g because of the time shortage i have gone quite fast so we look into already the research has started with respect to cg so every time everyone everything everywhere that is there or that is 100% connection for whoever is there on earth with things connected so if you look into the evolution towards 6g as it was mentioned earlier 1g for only for voice communication that was analog several kilobits per second afterwards 64 kbps with digital technology coming that is so these generations that are taking place in normally in a decade 2g came in 1980 with gsm 3g with more mbps coming to picture with internet introduced and 4g more than 100 mbps that was expected and internet of applications and 5g will be one to change mbps and 6g is supposed to give terabits per second that is nearly another multiplication factor but all these things will be coming to picture with better quality of service earlier we are talking now quality of experience how do you expect different users will be having different experience so the user has to be always satisfied that is quality of expectancy or that's what is expect from the user side and latency it started from 500 milli seconds response time round trip delay it has gone come to we are talking about 1 millisecond it will be less than that point 1 millisecond for 6g so it will be almost instantaneous so if you look towards 6g thinking what we have is a physical world the digital world already we are utilizing because it is going to it is helping also during this pandemic and another one is a biological world so all these things are connected in a big way so everything has to happen when you are connecting everything with a dense condition at a global level the real time operation is much more required so in that connection 6g with very high speed operations when we are going into sub millimeter band or terahertz ranges where you are expecting at least to get 1 terabits per second that is what is expected so then you will be getting all these worlds connected so there is always some key point indicators the data rate for 5g was 1 gbps it will at least 6g will be 100 times download rates 20 gbps it will be greater than 1 terabits per second the latency will be less than 0.1 milliseconds as compared to 1 millisecond and mobility we are talking about up to 100 kilometers per hour ever the connectivity can be done without break of service so that's what is expected from 500 to 1000 and operating frequencies 3 to 3 1000 gigahertz now in the terahertz range so this is shown here the terabits per connectivity the communication reliability has to be nearly 100% 
the security has to be 100%. That's what is expected. Because when everything is connected and everyone is connected at a global level, security plays a bigger role. And latency, zero latency, it is ideal, but it is not possible to have ideal, but it will be around 0.1 millisecond centimeter level positioning of accuracy. So there's what you can have the accuracy of positioning up to centimeter level. There's what is expected with 3D radio imaging. So imaging will become much more better. The surveillance will be better. Fully automated networks and smart context in utilization of all human senses for user experience. So once again, here also, as we go towards higher frequency ranges and higher generations, user is given a greater importance and rather than network. So the user experience is going to be immersive. That's what is expected. So what that's what is expected by 2035, 60 cell phones, they may send wireless signals at the rate of human computation, wireless cognition. So our, our brain speed will not be knowing it will be 20,000 terabits per second, but it is expected that at least we can have the, the robots can have some nearness to human computation with 60, that is we call it as wireless cognition, at least if you go to 100 terabits per second. It can facilitate human intelligence sent over here instantaneously. That's what is expected. It can give accurate positioning down to centimeter level. That's what is almost like human eyes or eagle eye. And it can test year around allergens, explosive chemicals and other things. It can provide accuracy for navigation robotics and provide additional feature for high definition video. So that's what is expected. Towards the end, I will be talking about the radiation effects. Already there was a case in Supreme Court. The currently 5G exposure at around 5. Now the frequencies used are less than 5 gigahertz. It is similar to that of whatever you are having. So the expectation is same as whatever you are having. Sports ones are being used for years and its effect has not been seen significantly with respect to radiations. Whereas RF exposure level from the current technologies is negligible has negative temperature range in human bodies. That is what has been seen or studied. But as the frequency increases, we have seen that the skin depth changes. So the penetration into the body tissues will be less and it will be more clear of only to the surface. That's what is expected as you go towards the higher frequencies. 5G devices, they emit radiation such much lower levels than what could affect human beings. That is what is expected. So long-term effect is not known because 5G has just now it has started from 1990, 2019 onwards. Allowable evidence says 5G is safe. And the exposures, if we follow international guidelines on EM fields, if it is, if we follow that, it is supposed to have no consequence for public health. That's what is given by WHO. The waves cannot travel as far as 5, 4G waves but they are more penetrable because we are going towards more beam radiations or narrow beams. And with use of multiple beams, the exposure can be variable, depends upon where you are and your location for the radiations. Zero evidence is, has been seen or studied for corona effect or coronavirus and 5G radiation. They don't have any connection. High power radiations can be harmful to health. That's what some people are telling. It was found that there was an effect on the accuracy of weather forecasting. That was one of the study by research. But market forces are always working and they always talk positively of 5G and the activists, they always talk negatively. So we have to have somewhere in, way, in between. But as technology people, we should always think that technology is going to help the human race. At the end, we can conclude that the wireless communication has entered into our life just like any part of our body. No other technology has developed in such exponential way. And with this 5G or beyond 5G coming to picture, the cellular revolution is really taking place. So we are looking towards more device to device communication and machine to machine communication with more automation playing a big role and IoT and IOE coming in a bigger way and vehicular communication and healthcare applications becoming more automated. And they're the major driving force behind 5G and beyond. 
and what we expect is better quality of service but we don't talk about quality of service it is quality of expectancy or experience and we'll be talking about self organizing networks as compared to the networks whatever we had which we call it as lager networks at present which were fixed self organizing networks are coming to picture but a major concern behind all these things is increasing energy consumption so this has to be taken into consideration with greenhouse requirements and india is expected to get 5g services by august 15 2022 so thank you that's what i wanted to tell i have hurried it requires more time to be very detailed lecture though a very limited time can you speak grammar together on this yes sir yes sir a little sir thank you sir murli sir uh, professor murli gar thank you uh, thank you all for a patient hearing sir i think you left nothing about pyg for the fucking next speaker you covered everything right from uh, zero to the i think uh, infinity because i found uh, excellently uh, very precisely and because is i think it is a matter of 3 uh, 4 hours lecture you have brought in uh, 2020 mets that's up to you sir and and no topic is you have left you covered everything right from the spectrum to the to its architecture and also its uh, uh, total applications and what key indicators it has and and finally you concluded how it is also useful in the healthcare uh, really i think my uh, 15 uh, uh, slides <laughs> out of <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you, sir, thank you and thank you i have learned so much because we are engineers you are a professor really proud not a professor you are a legend in profession thank you sir thank you for the okay. excellent lecture any time you can take my help and you can have a longer lecture sure, for sir, students if you want in fact i have taken out the note as well as your mobile uh, uh, this uh, mail also thank you sir thank you so thank you very much thank you murli gar okay thank you now can i go for the second speaker sir yeah please second speaker brigadier dr abram sir abram sir yeah, yeah. Uh, superior i do if you can uh, avoid the briefing uh, introduction i can get on to it okay okay i will brief it sir brief uh, let, uh, let one minute sir let people know sir we even i am not much aware of <laughs> a little little i will a kind of format one or two minutes brigadier dr v d abraham sena medal gallantry an engineer by profession daring leader decorated with the gallantry award by the president of india excelled as a researcher a renowned innovator whose four innovations are inducted into indian army educationist more of organization with charisma doctorate ECE from Jawaharlal Nehru University or University of Hyderabad, the Vice Chancellor of a University Indore and the Sri Venkateswara University UP. Earlier to that, he was serving as Brigadier Electronic Indian Army. Okay, Dr. Abraham led the 15th Indian Scientific Expedition to Antarctica. i have also traveled to antarctica sir brigadier <laughs> sir in 1995 for 16 months his research on satellite based navigation activities and the sphere sphere had it the h of communication to inland and benefited immensely to the expeditionary activities he was honored with a few national international awards including sena medal a gallantry award by the president of india on 15 august 96 bharat mata award in 2014 and best vice chancellor award 2016 oh very good higher education form gujarat chapter in collaboration with iqsc the maharaja sahajire university of baroda and cksc institute of management has conferred leadership in education award 2018 for higher education institutions to honorable vice chancellor dr v d abraham mm. 
present thank you sir thank you very much uh, okay okay sir really such a great person among us actually he will give a lecture on mobile and wireless communication enabler he is really a charisma leader i know that <laughs> Thank Please you very much. Thank you very much, Subhadra Sir. Uh, I was on a short leave. I am presently on a short leave in Kerala. While I was traveling and driving, Subhadra Sir has told me that is it possible. I couldn't say no to him. I am thankful <laughs> to him. I am thankful to Pramandra uh, Sir and um, so, um, the Chairman of uh, Telangana State Centre, and uh, Engineer Ranjaya Sir, and the Secretary Dissing, and all the eminent. personalities present here you might have heard uh, professor murli uh, was talking about the end result of what is actually on ground happening in this how much effort have been put into behind that is a question this is only one point which i disagree with the uh, professor murli was the radiation effect which is true and that and the microwave uh, towers have killed the most of the birds other than pigeons which you can see in hyderabad uh, i am sincerely thankful to mahesh also for a uh, constant interaction with me and presently he is uh, giving the slides can i have the next slide yeah actually every person every organization every uh, agencies as given with a small responsibility to work in this particular field subsequently it has been compiled by a different agency before it is been sent and test bed has been done subsequently it has been given to 3 gp gpp or itus for subsequently for promulgation of this uh, standards so what has been done by these agencies at length we'll go over next next slide if it really this is whatever uh, mr professor murli has said three things are the most important things first the density and if it really you see the thing up it is whether it is smart city whether it is a voice this all got a lot of density which is been covered by the mass uh, machine type of communications there is another important thing is the latency in which the accuracy cannot be compromised with ultra reliable and low latency communications and the total field of which a professor ready has mentioned as enhanced bandwidth and the throughput which we require is been achieved by enhanced mobile broadband this is basically the connectivity platform which is the step ahead from beyond 2020 next if at all you are having a look of it these are the technologies of whether it is iot artificial intelligence blockchain and the things the amount of percentage of investment by the industries it sees this what this in technology are beneficial for the industrial development and this so you can have a look of it whatever if at all you start talk of it whether it is iot a backbone of all this is mobile communications next so this different persons different agencies has given with different work projects and subsequently and the key technology components has given and the concept is kept and isolated and given back to the to the test bed to the test firstly we have mentioned already seen what is said, direct device to device d to d which has got availability and reliability and uh, with the spectrum of efficiency is the uh, in addition to that in the capacity of a particular area professor murli was really everything in 5g and beyond is dynamic whether up to 4g we have seen that geographically the cellular system has come and however now even though geographical is the back, uh, background it will be subsequently it will be on 
density based. Wherever there is more of crowd, wherever there is more of requirement, wherever more of accuracy, latency, then the things will change. People from an off, um, hospital who is looking after that uh, you know, online operations of through the robots controls, many people may be controlling it. There, that area requires latency. Whereas a sports stadium, which I'll be mentioning, doesn't require much of latency. It is the massive density is being adjust. Similarly, similarly, the second one is massive machine communications in which the scalability, the data rate and the latency cost availability is being addressed. Next slide. And the other horizontal topics are all, most of the networks are moving. So all these problems of handing over and taking over, handshaking and all those capabilities depends upon the mobility speed has to be addressed in by each agency system. So it is beyond and the hopping speed. So subsequently I'll be touching up in the moving network how a operator and the user equipment will be able to address this distance. So another thing is the UDNs, ultra dense networks, where the radio links are better, better exploited of underutilized spectrum. I'll be touching about the spectrum as an exposure. And finally, the things is to do the ultra reliable communication URC. Basically, it should be cost of everywhere, it should be scalable and cost efficient and for the network and extreme requirements on availability and reliability. Next slide. These are the horizontal topics. These horizontal topics are depicted in the center. D2D, MMC, MN, UDN, ultra, ultra URC, and subsequently any of that things ahead. These total things you can see from which WP128 has been addressed out here in the management, the project management has campaigned, has bedded, and is sent across for the production for the promulgation of the standards. Next slide. So this is the basically next slide. See this, if at all you have a look of it, total five scenarios are depicted down here. This is where the spectrum, the resource of the spectrum, where it's whether it, which, which one is underutilized, which one is overutilized, how can we share it? And these are five scenarios, which was just amazingly fast focusing, high data rate for future mobile broadband users. And uh, second one is great service in a crowd, focusing on professional reasonable mobile broadband experiences in a crowded area. Ubiquitous things of communicating, focusing on efficient handling. And the best experience follow you, focusing on user, end users with a high level of experience. Mm -hmm. And finally, super real time and reliable connections, focusing on the application and the use with strict requirements of accuracy and reliability. These are the five scenarios in which all communications relay upon. Next slide. This is how basically this. This is basically the test cases of 12 case studies on these five scenarios, how it can be superimposed and how it be overlap and overlink is depicted out here, in which I'll be describing little on this on my next slide. Next slide. These are the total sorry, uh, test cases. First of all is the virtual reality offices, in which a 3D telepresence of the virtual reality company with an it, Virtual reality company with intense, high demanding multimedia devices, which is installed itself in a new premises, could be in an old area, and uh, where 
the multi device data rates needed are around 1 gigabits per second each this particular scenario is placed in an individual environment where all the team members are uh, sparsely kept in different rooms and with uh, in different folds uh, flows so that actually the reality virtual reality offices can be tested and subsequently it found in the test bed approval similarly is dense and urban information society where in all the uh, users of urban area they require a high communication data rates and, and uh, wherever they move around Simil similarly they also tend to follow unpredictable moving patterns somebody uh, moving speed moving directions and this also to be catered for in a dense urban information society next other test uh, cases which you had professor uh, Murli also mentioned of a shopping mall in which uh, it basi basically both wide and local and the small areas basically manifold wireless sensors networks in a large shopping mall with high density of customers together together means the catchword where we are going for non orthogonal transmission this is the place in which we may not be able to use this. So, all the spectrum utility has to be selective vis-a-vis in, in the utilization, user and equipment and, and uh, test beds. This I'll be touching up on in one, one of my slides. Similarly, with the, where the stadium, which is uh, Professor Murli has mentioned, in which the latency may not be of great importance. However, the mass utility is to be catered for so different different set next where similarly other test cases for tele protection of what a smart grid network which nobody should be able to uh, uh, drop onto it and therefore the real time information is very much critical here the maximum latency of a uh, few milliseconds is required for this type of test uh, protection and teleprotection of a smart grid. Other thing which you has mentioned about the wherever, whenever we are on a traffic jam, where the connectivity is more and people are doesn't have patience and the volume is very high, those type of different scenarios also to be addressed. In addition to all of this, we do have to cater for the blind spots in which the frequency, even though the zone today, Professor Murli was mentioning about the lobs which can be bent and addressed on a single building from first floor to 10th floor, he was mentioning. Similarly, you'll be able to. You see, the other utility of the other lobs of the antennas can also be utilized for uh, other user ends. Next. This is the basically the sum of the six. And the eighth one is the real-time remote computing for mobile terminals. Whereas you are especially of the cloud computing technology, which enables the shift complex processing task to for to remote servers. Basically, it is the quality of service is, uh, is in demand. And this scenario is the user and directly linked with the um, operators. That is basically the things which move around in this particular. Uh, this is basically one hop from the user end to mobile net operators, which, which is there on the vehicle uh, rooftop. Subsequently, the second hop, which is likely to get into the user end equipment. Next. Whereas the other places which scenario which we have mentioned about it, this outdoor festivals in which whereas the weather, outdoor music festival where mm -hmm. average is around uh, 100,000 users in the different, uh, same place and uh, 
this is also whether where we are, we require more sensors, more cameras, and when it's operating, interference should not be available. It should not be happening. This is basically the so test case which has been done out there. And the 10th one was the emergency communications in which the fastness of speed, high, whether it is based on the prioritizations and need to have basis, we are, and will be based on a car mounted multi hop, even the mesh networking, or use high altitude platforms or satellites. Satellites may take. Um, the, the latency we will have a land. Uh, so normally this one-to-one -one hopping system should be adopted to plan for this emerging emergency conditions. Next two next slide. Next two cases, you can see that massive deployment sensors and actuators. This is basically was mentioned Professor Murli was mentioning about it. The number of users as exponentially growing over the years and it's not because of their on growth single person using more sensors on them where it is where he may be having a hand gear he may be having headgear he may be having mobile he may be having uh, uh, mobile uh, stations and one single person will have more sensors to know whether it is running speed whether it is whatever it is speed each, each sensor requires a power and interference will be there. And finally, that everyone look forward the traffic efficiency and safety in which you are mentioning about the radiation effect and whether it is uh, uh, efficiency in which non-interference and non um, uh, 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 distortion of frequency, which are the main cases in which one should be able to address this. Next. So if at all you've seen that we got a limited spectrum band. Optimum utilizations, even Professor Murli was mentioning about a particular case in where uh, the distortion was under. Here I want to mention, I was there in Antarctica for 16 months in which I have first project which I have taken, establishing the edge of communication from Antarctica towards the mainland of India. This is basically I utilize the tunnelized effect of what is the vapor which is above the sea level, which vapor it becomes a platform that has been particular time communication. Else, in '95 there was no much of satellites in which we were using the marine satellite in which the cost was very high, so the expeditioners were unable to talk to the main land. HF communication was one of those. Similarly, if you see that, how the spectrum can be currently is used. These are the questions in which these agencies, when making the projects, work projects, has been the same. Is the spectrum currently available, or it can be made available using you, and legacy spectrum authorization concept. So I'll be touching upon on a slide, on a, a, a picturized way in that later. Next. If at all you see that 5.925 to 40.5 gigahertz, that particular band, I have picturized it. Next slide. Ah, if at all you see that this is a, this is basically that 5.925 to that particular band in which you can see and the red mark is the low priority utilization in which that was spectrum. Yellow is medium priority of basically low priority using 3.4 gigahertz, whereas uh, medium using 3 gigahertz, and high priority is using only 1.6 gigahertz. So if at all you were seeing the total number of utility of the total eight. 0.6 and 7 in 8 gigahertz only has been utilized up here. Next slide. So we got ample scope of utilization on the So that as similarly utilization has been done for all the frequency bands according to this. We have seen it. Actually, the sharing technology, as we have already know that 
it is whether it is FDD or TDMA or location dimensions in which different sufficient separation so that the same spectrum can be used at the same time without any interference. Similarly, the spatially uh, dimensions, similarly, if it will the same spectrum at the same time, if it will orthogonal spatial resources interference uh, can be done so that interference can, can be avoided. And the fourth and the fifth one in which I have done my uh, PhD is the code dimensions in which the CDMA technology, which automatically, however, the code has got a limitation of orthogonal codes, has got a limitation. However, this is one of the best possible technology in which spectrum sharing can happen. However, in addition to this, not orthogonal system also will be used any of the above four uh, uh, sharing technologies. Next slide. So if at all you see it in picturized way, total spectrum toolbox says that it's been controlled either by a regulatory framework, regulatory authorities, in which we know that total spectrum is either primary ones or unlicensed one or licensed one. Only three modes are there in which licensed diversion has got uh, a, a different priority and categorization. If I told the sharing scenario, if in the total picture I say is we have marked with the, uh, bolded lines is actually which is uh, existing, existing on ground. Whereas with the dotted lines, these are the probable things or can be utilized or using or further it can be utilized. This is basically that is if at all the Come back to the solution domain. So, where is the total coordination of the protocol? Is the you know that the spectrum resource is limited and it is constant, and optimum utilization is can be done by the solution domain. That is where is the coordination of the protocol and the total spectrum can be co coordinated whether. Uh, it is sensing the dynamic frequency selection or dynamic channel selection. Depends upon which place, how we are moving it. And, uh, and basically this global location database and the Wi-Fi coexistence mode and many more technologies and uh, solutions will be coming ahead with, with the uh, evolution of 5G even before 60. Next slide. Where is next? See, that's that is this is proper. This was this slide was already covered in uh, by Professor Murley. What why the millimetric wave, whether it is not being utilized as atmosphere gaseous laws, rain laws, foliage laws, scattering the faction. Next slide. This was been touched out once. What are the potential additional spectrum? First of all, analyzation of new bands, development of the new spectrum sharing concept. You said the spectrum is quite uh, uh, the constant. The sharing concept can be developed, and the provision of the enablers for the efficient use of new radio concepts, which can guarantee coexistence, interference management, and finally, it is the design and overall spectrum management concept. Mm -hmm. What is already existing, yes, we had enough uh, spectrums and frequency bands, so we were lavish with it. It is now time for us to accommodate and optimize it. Next slide. Yeah, this is this same thing was mentioned by Professor Murli too. Provide basically it is 100 times mobile data, uh, 1000 times higher mobile data per area, and this is the concept reduced, let's say five, five times reduced to end to end latency. Accuracy is more time reduced, rest all is gone, and efficiency, battery, charge, uh, uh, propagations, this all things uh, is basically in the 
things which are used. Next slide. Yeah, this is, bam, this is the basically the objectives. If you use seen, efficiency is one. Efficiency is low because the, the target circle uh, has been placed is efficiency, scalability, or versatile. And um, the efficiency is low for a constant growth, whereas the scalability responds to wide range and versatility to support the significant diverse requirements. These are the things of objectives of just strengths. Next. Next slide. Yeah, this all the structures. If you've seen them, total work packages, who all are addressed what all this? See that WP1 has done by Docomo, uh, Huawei, and, and Lucent, NSN, Nokia, Ericsson, like that. Every research organization were given the responsibility to do one or the other things. Next slide. See, this was only been covered by the six. What is massive antenna and massive uh, MIMO? Multi antenna and massive MIMO. MIMO. Basically, this uh, uh, yeah, this, okay, this concept is uh, massive MIMO has been introduced in the cellular networks. Where the base station equipment with a larger number of antennas serves uh, simultaneously to multiple users. Similarly, massive MIMO, which um, exploits the additional spatial um, degree of freedom to multiplex messages of several terminals in the same time frequency resources, basically to maximize the beam forming game by focusing a radiated energy towards the intended receiver to minimize the inter intracell and intracell interferences. And um, the main defining feature of Master Mimo is a large number of antennas at the base station. It reduces a transmit energy and constantly significant interference reduction. This basically Overheads have been reduced, and uh, coordinated interference is uh, avoided in this system. Next slide. These are the basically the challenges which uh, we do have. Impact of the massive MIMO, exploit the massive MIMO, exploit the spatial degree of freedom, and possible massive MIMO deployment. And finally, it has been vetted through the test beds and to, to be uh, the standard for money generation is being done by three GPP. Next slide. Total, finally, when I was mentioning that we analyze spectrum, we analyze the technology, we have finally this, uh, the most of biggest obstacle which vulnerable is the air interference in which all the types of interferences what is this what are the different types of scenarios whether it is um, multi radio access technology whether multi mod and, and multi antenna whether it is spectrum all these air interferences have been addressed in different different wps next slide this is how this I have already mentioned. What are, what are the presently DTD, MMC? And uh, so he was also mentioning, perhaps Murli also too has mentioned about this. Next slide. So, if at all this, if at all, and uh, moving networks, what are the interferences available? Is been whether this, <coughs> how, how we can interference of moving network systems can be avoided. And uh, next, other interferences are for the UDN and the URC, how they have addressed, and these are being studied, and the support has been given, and uh, it has been done. Next slide. So, basically, to conclude, we have to have a foundations for beyond 5G mobile and wireless system, 
by providing the technical enablers needed to address the requirement forced into this type. These five sensors I already mentioned, and these are the five challenges, and these are the places in which the research is much more wanted, and we do have many persons working on this field. That reminds me of the small things. I have uh, done my PhD in CDMA technology in 2000. In 2000, I maybe could be the one of the early birds because availability of uh, things available within the reach was only through print media. So whatever getting printed and the technological analyzation was being done is when the time lag was of 20 years. As same, similarly, what is presently there in uh, artificial intelligence, you know that today n number of uh, responding systems, whether it's Alina, Alexia, all those things. These all systems were also existing two decades before. However, the communication, connectivity, and the cost efficiency, which has made this technology growing exponentially high. And that's how we have reached this stage. And we are looking forward to exponential growth much more faster and make our next generation more lazy. That could be. Thank you very much. Next slide. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Brigadier Abrahamji. Excellent presentation and very detailed lecture. I will ask my chairman to add some more words. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Dr. Brigadier, Dr. Abraham, sir. An excellent uh, uh, information as well as uh, the, what I can say is a lecture you can uh, you put in a short span of 25 minutes and describing <laughs> the entire uh, uh, the enable mobile enablers, uh, how it works and how the connectivity platform function and feature how it is and how the adoption of emerging technologies are being done and intermediate description of spectrum needs and the 12 cases uh, really excellent sir the case studies which you have given for the five scenarios of 12 cases is a really a wonderful uh, uh, this thing and nice and very even a layman can understand what a, uh, a mobile communication enabler is. And finally, you have also given the total uh, investigation part of the spectrum bands and then potential of its spectrum, then propagation, how, how the antenna, this thing is there, how oriented objectives of enablers does. And above all that, you also gave the interface, the 5 interface. It was really very nice, sir. And you made it actually very simple way to understand the the participants, even uh, even if they are not uh, from electronics, I think they enjoyed your uh, lecture, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank for you very much. Lecture. Before I wind up, I am a port, I'm a member of a society called Mobile and Wireless Communication Enabled oh. for 2020 Information Society. Oh. This has published uh, many. These all things are already published by them and worked out the world. So my talk is reference to this METIS, Mobile yeah. and Wireless Communication Enable for 2020 Information Society. Oh, Thank you very yeah. much. Once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Can I go for a third lecture? Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Now, Professor G. Radha Krishna, of course, he is my colleague and a very good, I can say, very good friend for the last, uh, say, one decade. Of course, he, he is also a member of IETE and also Institute of Engineers. So, Biodata is a simply... Oh, yeah. I think we will limit it. Limited, 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 I will be it. <laughs> Professor G. Radha Krishna, FIE, did his BE 
ECE and ME microwave with distinction from Usmania University Hyderabad. He worked in R&D and industry defense, HAL, for 30 years. And after superannuation, he worked for last 20 years as professor. So not only in educational field, he's in industrial <laughs> field also. <laughs> professor, HOD, principal, and dean in many, many private engineering colleges, both in AP and Telangana. He has also worked with Mrs. Selena Limited Company for one year in Rome, Italy. He widely traveled in many countries in Asia, Europe, Australia, China, and South Africa. He wrote a number of articles and papers in journals, presented papers in conferences and seminars, including Internet of Things IoT and Artificial Intelligence AI. He published books on radar, microwave, optical and cellular mobile communication for students as for JNTU syllabus. At the present, he is a visiting professor and guest faculty in many engineering colleges. He is a fellow of IETE, member of Hyderabad Management Association and Aeronautical Society of India. Presently, joint honorary secretary of this institution of engineers, Telangana Center. I invite you, sir. Please. Thank you, Superiti Garu, okay. for good words. Now, the, after two eminent speakers, Professor Murli Garu and Dr. Brigadier Dr. Abraham, it is very difficult to come and speak because most of the cover, they have covered it. Anyhow, something here and there, what they have left because of the time constraint. Naturally, sir, first speaker and second speaker, after third speaker, it may be not left out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyhow, okay, okay. please. A little bit time on communication technologies. Uh, now we call it as ICT, that is Integrated Communication Technology, including the computer, that is Internet. So we should thank two people immediately, that is G. Marconi, who has given life to the wireless communication in 1897, proving <coughs> possibility of radio transmission by wireless. Then 1935, Edwin Armstrong, has given FM modulation technique used for mobile communication. So these two people are very important for the technological developments. And in 1947, Dr. H. Ring, working in Bell Labs, uh, <clears throat> has given the concept of cellular communication, which we are dealing now. 1948, Chalkley, Burton, Britain have invented the transistor with solid state technology, which is a solid state device which has revolutionized the electronics and especially communication techniques. So now already they have covered 1G, 2G, 2.5G is also there, 3G. And 3G was GSM technology with 2005 and 2006 and 5 megahertz bandwidth. Now I'll go to the quickly slides which uh, uh, which will be so I will be covering evaluation of from 1G to 5G is already there extending current capabilities on understanding 5G features of 5G 5G impact in life and 5G limitations next slide please this is what about the 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G, and 5G. Then what, what are the, their applications where pictorically it is shown and it is already covered. Next slide, please. Now, this is the explanation about that and which is already covered. I don't want to go more. And 4G is IP-based, that is internet protocol. Up to 3G, it was digital and 4G also digital only it is with internet. That is the difference between 3G and 4G. And uh, 4G is possible with MIMO, multiple input and multiple output, multiplexing. 
multiple. And the most important of 4G standards are WiMAX, which is wireless microwave, interoperability microwave access, and LTE, that is later term, long term evolution. Next slide, please. This is more about that. And it is given the difference. The difference between 4G and NT. Even after it was widely available, many networks were not up to the required speed of 4G. 4G LTE is the fourth generation long term evolution. Capable are delivering very fast and secure internet connection. Basically, 4G is the predetermined standard for mobile network concept. Okay, support interactive multimedia, voice, video, high speed, high capacity, low cost per bit, speeds up to 20 megabits per second or more. Global and scalable mobile networks, ad hoc and multi hop networks. Multi hop is one more feature, additional feature here. Next, please. Here we have shown you the picture. What is, what is the LTE? Faster and download, high speed internet, better signal, connectivity, video telephony, mobile TV, and lower latency. Latency is the round trip delay, how much it takes. 4G, it was uh, about uh, 10 milli 50 milliseconds, and 5G, it is 1 millisecond. Next. Well, most people think of 5G, they think of as unique technology, unlike any previous generation of wireless networking. 5G will not be only about the new speed, it is whole ecosystem change towards flexible, extensible network, 5G, and E2E ecosystem to enable fully mobile and connected society. It empowers value creation through existing and emerging use cases enabled by sustainable business models. Next slide, please. Next slide, okay. That's what I covered it. Next will be 5G spectrum. So, which is already covered by both the speakers. We are up to 5G is up to, we are going only 5 to 6 gigahertz. You have not touched a millimeter wave still. Next slide. This is already done. 5G spectrum. Next. No, you can skip this slide. Go for next. Yeah, this is about framework and 5G architecture. Business model infrastructure. This is all given in the picture is to view E to E, Mano, and other details are given in this. Next. <clears throat> 5G technologies will cover Cloud RAN, a centralized cloud company based on RAN architecture where part of BP processing is done in the edge cloud. Ultra dense, massive memo, MMWave, device to device, D2D, communication, SD, that is <coughs> decoupling the CP and UP, enabling efficient and separated optimization, each plane, network slicing. So these are the 5G technologies available. Yeah. Next. This 5G wireless access and uh, multiple integrated wireless access solutions enabling long-term network society. So the details are given here. Multi-top communication, device-to-device -device communication, business cloud, novel services, virtual augmentation, ultra-reliable 
communication, machine communication, intravehicular, vehicular to road communication. The frequency is given. 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Next, please. VX, vehicle to everything. This is one unique feature of 5G, where a long list of user cases. Collision avoidance, forward collision warning, do not pause warning, blind inspection, queuing warning, curve speed warning, cooperative cruise control, pedestrian alerts, bicycle alerts, discover parking space, discover charging station, traffic signal priority, optimal speed advisory, emergency vehicle alert. So, so many things can be done with vehicle to vehicle. Next. This is an important thing is, what is the impact in life with 5G? There is nothing but advantages, spectral efficiency, energy efficiency, high data rate, user tracking, user tracking becomes more reliable, accurate as narrow signal beams are used. This is already given by Professor Murli. Low power consumption, built with ultra lower power linear amplifiers, which eliminate the use of bulky electronic equipment in the system. This power consumption can be considerably reduced. Next. Less fading. A large number of antenna at the receiver makes massive MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, resilient against fading. Low latency, that is massive MIMO reduces the latency on the air interface, that is the round trip delay, is low latency. Robustness, massive MIMO systems are robust against unintended Interface, interference, and internal jamming. That is another jamming feature which is useful for design, defense, reliability, enhanced security, low complex linear processing. I do international next. International Telecom Union use case triangle. A triangle is given here. Enhanced mobile broadband. Massive machine type communications, ultra reliable and low latency communication. Next. Yeah, this we have already covered. Next, please. So this is what is the new one is the limitations. What are the limitations? So, so far we have seen all the advantages of 5G. Along with immense advantages, 5G technology comes with certain challenges. Some of the challenges for 5G technology are interference crosstalk at 100 km signal, 100 km speed signal disappears. So, uh, if the vehicle is going more than 100 km per hour, then the suddenly there will be handoff, that is, Signal disappears. And what is the reason? No. And I have to ask Murli whether, uh, Professor Murli, whether it has been overcome by this time. Frequency bands, frequency bands up to 300 gigahertz have been considered for a 5G network. These high frequency bands are costly, and wireless carriers will have to pay millions to get the high frequency spectrum. Coverage, the high frequency wave has shorter wavelength that uh, is already told, thus it cannot travel a longer distance. Due to this, there should be more base stations in a smaller area to give each user reliable connection. The additional base station increases the cost and complexity of the overall network. Cost. Since 5G is not just about adding extra layer to the 4G network, the cost to build the system from the base level is prohibitive. Device support. Support. Since the phones are available in the current market, does not support 5G infrastructure, and it would be a challenge for device manufacturers to develop cheaper phones which can support 5G. 
Now, today only I have seen in the paper that Apple Corporation of USA is making from 2022 onwards the cell phones compatible only 5G. All other models they will not. So they are making 4G phones compatible and new phones, whatever is coming model, they will be 5G compatible in 2022. That's what. Uh, Security and privacy, although 5G uses authentication and key agreement, aka system, it is still vulnerable from attacks and as middleman attack, location tracking and US dropping. Cybercrime, with high speed data, cybercrime would increase drastically. Thus, strict cyber laws would be necessary to prevent these attacks. Next slide, please. Okay. Test challenges of 5G. Wider channel bandwidth and greater data capacity, new polarization and fatal processing techniques, massive memo, cooperative memo, adaptive beam booming. High frequency bands mean higher propagation loss. Five meter free space loss is 7.75.3 beam at 28 gigahertz. Loss through low E windows at 28 gigahertz can be as much as 25 to 60 dB. Here, normally free space loss is 20 dB. Then if it is a foliage, that means trees and other things are there in the thing, then another 20 dB added. And in, in mobile communication, whatever it is key, but 20 dB is a mobile loss. So minimum of 60 dB loss will be there in always mobile communication. Increased reliability requirement for applications such as remote surgery, that is health, vehicle to everything, communication for self-driving cars, critical communication, police, fire, ambulance, higher traffic demands, massive machine type communication, MMTC and IoT, Internet of Things. Two development tracks are new radio and our 5G, no backward compatibility, LTE 5G use and improve existing 4G infrastructure. Now, Airtel of India, that is Bharati Airtel, has made a collaboration today for development of 5G phones with the international designing and processing giant. Intel Corporation, and they are going to manufacture cell phones with 5G technology in collaboration. That is one, one more important news which is there today. So, with this, I have covered most of the things, and some reputation, small reputation will be there. And I thank the next director. I thank the IE for giving me opportunity to this presentation. And I also thank my old student, V. Shivani, for preparing slides for my sake. Thank you very much. Subhidhar. Thank you, Radha Krishna Garu. And. Uh... Now I invite Chairman to yeah. speak about the talk a little. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Subhredi, sir. You can summarize. Uh, Professor Radha Krishna, uh, really, because uh, almost I think uh, the earlier two speakers covered. Uh, 75% of the total subject and uh, nicely he has picked the out of the 25%. I think he has also covered 10% leaving only 10% uh, for me, but he will definitely hear a good topic which is uh, related to finance and uh, banking. Uh, he has covered uh, limitations very nicely by reducing my further work impact of 5G and also features of the technology and the use cases and uh, really ex excellent, uh, very excellently uh, explained all the 
in brief and uh, of course covered all the topics uh, thank you dr professor radhakrishnan garu thank you sir thank you very much very much thank you brahmarad garu now it is your turn Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now hey, it little... become like like a last bowler coming and <laughs> five runs <laughs> left and you have to make ten runs. <laughs> sir, sir. Thank you, sir. I will try to justify my uh, time. Uh, I I request uh, our uh, Mahesh, sir, kindly put the slide. A brief bio data. Let me have, sir. Ah, uh, sir, alar no no. A yeah. brief, very brief, very brief. I am making. Engineer Brahma Reddy is fellow of IITE, so so many fellows actually, fellow of Institution of Valuers, life member of Indian Institute of Technical Arbitrators, life member of All India Management Association, member Internet Society, member of IAENG Hong Kong. He has served as secretary and director general of IEA, presently council member IEA, member on the board of management of. Yes, yes, key, and elected as chairman of Telangana State Center (IEA) for the sessions 2021 to 22 and 22 to 23. He is advisor to Spark Tem India Private Limited in technical and skill related issues. He has 15 years experience in Indian Air Force as radar engineer, two years as biomedical field engineer in USA. and two decades in banking technology has rich multi activity experience in electronics biomedical engineering banking technology management he is multifacial actually his experiences are multi multifacial talented i can say that that's sir bramaradi sir thank you for giving me opportunity sir sir, sir. <coughs> सारी ब्रह्मा रेडी गार अंत अलाटी चैरम इंका इच्छे लेकिन मच मच यंगर टॉपिक फ्यूचर आफ् इंडिया फैन टेक् पोस्ट को नई because i have expected all this they will cover it in 5g nothing will be left for me so i have selected a topic at the last i had a choice sir before that they have covered almost all but out of all that i just put two words of introduction of what is 5g and uh, today in market uh, everywhere there is a hype in every country including india the hype around 5g and the buzzword around the 5g it is faster more connected future and the future is very exciting but for many product designers the exact definition of the term 5g is not totally clear because why it is unlike the previous technologies like 2g 3g 4g all that easies this is not a uniform 5g network because all those were uniform networks by uniform network they are able to make on uniform applications but this is a multiple there are so many so many it can be used for anything because it is a set of networks for different applications so my application now it comes to finance and technology so i i am skipping rest uh, slides because these all standardization all that is covered i think uh, mahesh can you move to slide number 10 because our time is also short yeah can you stop there just uh, go back go back go back go back the diagram ah yeah this is uh, our uh, professor morali sir was talking about propagation i just wanted to for a brief 30 seconds you can see this is how the propagation is in that color blue red yellow this is how uh, uh, antenna uh, emits uh, the radio, uh, magnetic waves into the air that is how just i wanted to show one more uh, uh, earlier slide 4g and uh, 5g there is another diagram yeah this is this is uh, how 4g network compared to 5g in urban installation over a, a building of course 
the total uh, antennas uh, are multiple for 5G and whereas 4G it is less. Just they've already covered all this and don't want to further ex uh, explain. Kindly you can move. Move on to slide number 10. Yeah, slide number 10 is a, this is a, what is, what is FinTech? FinTech, now FinTech industry, we say FinTech companies. There are so many FinTech companies today in India <clears throat> because they, they are, the, the emergence of FinTech companies started from 2016 onwards. They are, they are replacing bank, bankers, they are replacing financial institutions. It's a combination of finance through technology. It's a definition itself is a concept developed in the 21st century as the financial services through technology or under technology. The adoption of this technology in the field of financial services, banking, share market, insurance sector, mortgage loans, like that is a database management and analytic tools and innovative approach. This now with the invent in the, in the uh, <clears throat> 5G technology beaming into the uh, uh, market is ex it is expected to create a new fine tech ecosystem in India too because the India is yet to uh, take though the <clears throat> IDBRT Hyderabad has formed a lab and recently they have launched in uh, as a experimentally they have launched 5G services in one of the bank, uh, which is had to be coming to the uh, customer's uh, level so that customer is benefited for that, that application part. So next, please move to slide number 11. These are the benefits of 5G for uh, FinTech industry. I am talking about everything, total financial, FinTech means financial technology for FinTech industry only. The benefits is uh, security and product detection. Though they are generalized, they are already told is a highly secured by 5G networks. Also, it is a streamlined lending for as far as the bankers or the lending institutions are concerned, it is a very, very streamlined lending because of 5G and real-time mobile banking user experience. We have seen over last fast uh, during the COVID period, right from uh, um, uh, March 2020 till date for the over the last one year, the mobile banking has shot up by 60% by the user than the earlier. That means the, the people are not going to branch. They are able to draw their money. They are able to do all their transactions through the mobile. In the days to come, if the 5G technology uh, totally launched, it is going to be, I think, by 2024 or beyond, only the India is going to have that spectrum. Some problem is there uh, uh, with the Indian government. As of today, we are only having 22% of uh, the percentage of the mobiles uh, being used in the... And also, there is always... Uh, the internet is not stable in India uh, because of that uh, frequently uh, the uh, connection also uh, goes on. So that the the speed with which 5G, it, as they said earlier, our uh, uh, brigadiers have said, it is uh, unless the stable internet connect is there, this, this network won't work. So similarly, artificial intelligence and virtual reality is also very beneficial for the fintech industry. Next. This fintech industry and an overview, the name is proposes as the blend of finance services and technology, I already uh, uh, told, and the technological advancement that very different from the traditional bank. Once the traditional bank is totally, in the future, there will not be any bank branch. If you go and you want to have a open an account, entire your KYC is done by the mission. They uh, Known as it will be intelligent ATM. Through ATM, you will be able to do all your transaction. You don't have to meet any human. So it will act as a, everything human and uh, the banking entire service is done at one point uh, at the ATM itself. Next slide, please. 
then 5g features they have already explained uh, even radha, radha krishna ji has put uh, just uh, that, that mission to mission all that they have covered i don't want to further uh, put you into trouble by uttering that yeah uh, please go to next uh, slide slide number 14 i, I think disruptions on fintech so the disruptions what is disruptions is a break the break means what disturbance like the emergence of these fintech companies this disrupted the entire banking and financial service industry because it they are totally technology driven services you take we used to get uh, one mobile uh, message from the icic bank or city bank something you are sanctioned 5 lakhs without anything you are in principle sanctioned 5 lakhs loan just you have to click and then do it you will get a loan and if if with the 5g is introduced here the as they said the time latency time or the uh, <clears throat> the propagation time is very very uh, less like one second uh, uh, 30 second so if with that how much uh, fast your services even then the human uh, you can get it but with the 5g mobile network now the fin fintech industry outlook itself is disrupted Di so that means it is disturbed they have to again tune to the new technology that is the 5g technology which is uh, expected to create a new fintech ecosystem in india and the features as they have uh, already they have touched lower latency time robust security aspects and also enhanced mobile broadbands as uh, our uh, brigadier sir has uh, explained how the spectrum uh, the total spectrum how and bands and all those things uh, so really is, is a hats up for uh, uh, the financial uh, technology industries concerned the 5g will be very 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 useful and the 5g 5g's application is a different in different domains offers uh, known as the blue ocean of new project prospects to find a country of the sorry find tech companies 5g technology also offers a special features to enable these companies to bring a massive change in the banking and finance field <clears throat> by catering to the rural even the remote areas will be able to uh, connect uh, through this thing and can do banking uh, at that place the branch can be for example in hyderabad 60 kilometers away from in a rural branch you need not to have a branch and if a 5g this thing is there you can do all his uh, services by his own in self you can do it no need of uh, <clears throat> the branch or any human uh, to help him by the year uh, now next slide key advancements in financial industries by the year 2022 this 5G internet connectivity is estimated to bring a lot of advancements in the final industry. Like the record, they have already touched that uh, uh, some. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, Dr. Murali, Professor Murali sir has already touched it about the case studies of video servants, servants uh, smart grid, and all that. And same thing comes, and same way, shopping mall, some uh, visual shop, virtual shopping, all that. Uh, our brigadiers have as such, they are the key advancements. And the same is also applicable to this industry. Next slide. Is 5G to change the role of mobile in society? Yes, 5G is alone is forecasted to add 2.2 trillion to the world economy by next 2021, end of 2021. And it has improved connectivity, Facilitated by 5G technology will be a catalyst for economic growth in the uh, industry 4.0 with a projected economic value of 13.2 trillion by the year 2035. This is also mentioned by him, not the volume. He has, men uh, he has mentioned by 2035 fully the technology will be occupying the entire the world. And uh, other all uh, uh, earlier technologies will be outdated. <clears throat> and today, I am proud to say the 6G is already being uh, developed by the China and 7G and 8G. Already Norway is using 7G and 8G in mm -hmm. some of its country uh, application. And South Korea is the smallest country, but uh, the, you can say strongest in the electron, uh, electronics field is already using a 10G with a 10GB per second. <clears throat> 
the mobile oriented business restructuring is undergoing in the banks and uh, finance uh, firms and it is meticulously the fintech fintech providers are providing better service retaining to retain the customers and attract new and potential ones like see the bank which is having totally earlier we uh, i think uh, last week we had one program on digital transformation where the 5g also further boosts the digital transformation and uh, better customer service and faster service and it'll give and it is to analyze its effect also on the fintech landscape now i come to the main point of the uh, my topic covid 19 impact on 5g infrastructure market next slide please yeah the first covid 19 the global 5g infrastructure market is estimated to grow from uh, uh, us dollars 12.6 billion in, uh, in the <clears throat> end of 2000, uh, 2020 and projected to reach to 44.9 us dollar by billion by 2025 and the projection of for 25 2025 is estimated to be down by 22% as compared to pre covid 19 estimation the major factors driving the growth of the 5g network infrastructure market include an exponential rise in data traffic increasing m to m connection all they have mentioned about machine to machine connections across the various industries partnerships alliances for 5g monetization and rising adoption in internet of things devices however supply chain disruptions delay in release of 5g specifications and the china us trade war will result in a lower market projection compared to pre covid 19 estimation next slide <clears throat> this is also same uh, is impact uh, continues same i am in analysis you can see the diagram in the diagram you see how uh, in 2019 pre covid 2020 during covid 2021 2022 23 24 25 that is the year how the this infrastructure 5g infrastructure mar- market pre and post covid how it is changing how this uh, is in market size is increasing earlier we have already the figures we have talked about but the shutdown of production facilities impacted the production and sales of 5g smartphone and today there is a problem in a shipment of 5g mobiles because 5g technology they are not able to provide as per the requirement to all the in the countries because china is also the ehs is suspecting the china is having some uh, <clears throat> some technology inside which they are unable to find they may do for uh, recognize and surveillance uh, activities of military act- actions on that country so they are uh, they are not allowing uh, the even 6g to come into the market uh, that is uh, actually they have banned uh, the defense uh, Dep- uh, us department of defense has banned that 6g uh, right into the market now as the unless this uh, the trade war uh, subsides and they enter into some collision i don't think 6g will be uh, entering the market but though we have uh, spoken earlier speakers but because already it is being done on research and also it is into the uh, the 5g infrastructure market is uh, it is to is driven by 5g enablers as the smartphones and increasing implementation of home automation technologies <clears throat> the covid 19 has adversely impacted smart board production that's what i'm saying the shipment the the, the shortage of uh, uh, sending these via communication among networks to the different uh, countries from the uh, whoever is producing which are countries this now there is a delay in release of 5g specification as resulted in a slowdown in the development of 5g ecosystem in march 2020 uh, as the 3g that is 3g the global association developing the world's 5g technology announced a three month delay in timeline for the completion of 5g specification that is already a earlier speaker somebody a uh, told release 16 and 17 i think professor murali has 
told that it was in 2020, so I had released 17 is done. But currently, the 5G network deployments are based on release 15 only, which are largely relies upon 4G networks as the backbone for standalone, non standalone 5G services. So, therefore, there is a delay in release 16 and 17, which has released, uh, which is uh, resulting in the slowdown of the commercial development of 5G devices and 5G deployments. There is a telecommunication authorities of several countries have postponed the spectrum, including India. Uh, it is uh, postponed. Uh, where uh, the geo was supposed to launch in India in a mass way, geo 5G, but uh, it is yet to uh, launch because it is delayed and postponed there. Government of India has postponed which will delay 5G rollout plans, so thereby affecting the 5G infrastructure market too. Several telecom operators and government of India authorities have delayed the 5G rollout plan and spectrum action also. And for instance, in India, Department of Telecommunication has postponed 5G spectrum action to the year 2021. So because of this COVID further, I think a spectrum still the action is not done. It may be further. Uh, <clears throat> delayed. Next slide. The 5G technology in fintech. The rapid internet speed has become imperative for the improved financial transactions. 5G has uh, an edge at handling heavy load compared. They have already spoken about whatever uh, heavy load is there, the, which the previous technologies are unable to handle. The 5G is the right uh, uh, candidate to handle the such uh, heavy loads. And the, uh, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, it said the last four years in India, it had the mobile money accounts in the banking had jumped 17 fold jump in the last four years in India. So that was uh, announced by the Financial Express during November 2020. Also, the Organization for European Cooperation and Development predicts an upsurge in world GDP, higher employment, and digitalization with quick 5G penetration. Once all the sanctions are released and the spectrum is, uh, uh, is released and the, has been auctioned and uh, released to the uh, private providers, then it will take uh, a faster penetration into the uh, total uh, market and replacing all one to one G to all four G, nothing will be there. Only five G will be there. And according to Ericsson, India has the world's highest data usage for smartphone at an average of 9.98 GB per month, and this is expected to double in two, by 2024 to you know, 18 GB. And already there have benefits we spoke around uh, about on the in the previous slide also. The earlier speakers have uh, touched it. The starts up and finance are providing computerized automatic guidance, touchless payments, and many more services that brings many social and economic benefits, which includes lesser prices and better access to credit. Like unlike now, you go and put a card in the ATM and then only when you swipe and put pin, all that you get the money. In the future, when the 5G is fully, it comes into the existence the card card and touchless card means card need not to be touched your atm still you can draw money and thereby more secured and more security but because you must have heard many times there is a well, card is in your pocket but uh, your money is uh, drained out from your account by cloning your card Sometimes in uh, somewhere, some one day you went and put your card. At that time, they have taken the, your card number and the your PIN number. They again make another cl clone a card of same this thing, and they used to loot the money. It happened even in cross of money in SBI, the a bank. I think in uh, 2016 or 17, uh, 70 crores money has gone drained out of the people from uh, in Hyderabad, though it was not mentioned, they have, it was the, the persons who are fully paid out by the SBI at, uh, on the directions of the Reserve Bank. They have also blocked the news coming to newspaper and other things, and other media. 
So the fintech being a relatively new category of companies, the business models are totally based on digital products. And India is doing fairly well in adopting fintech compared to most other nations. The destructive impact of the global financial crisis in 2008 has created every reason to suspect the purpose and working ethics of the financial service firms across the globe. Even big financial institutions also across the world suffered the worst from both economic as well as from the public trust perspective. So now the 5G will definitely take care of it because of its uh, uh, super security, secure features uh, it has. So even the leading global aeroplane manufacturer from Boeing has created a tech-based ecosystem for its commercial planes uh, with the 5G. And many international banks like JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citigroup, and, and other leading fintech companies like uh, Ant Financial, PayPal, Radian, ETC, uh, etc. are actively penetrating the 5G technology in their ecosystem to reap uh, the benefit out of the 5G wave. Next uh, slide, please. India and uh, five, uh, 5G services in uh, FinTech. Next, sir. Next slide. Okay, five. I will come back again. India. No. Okay, India fintech scenario. It is well known that the financial sector across the world, more especially in India, is undergoing a digital revolution. As we have earlier also, we had one lecture on digital tra uh, transformation. As per the fintech global, Indian. Fintech firms have raised over 13 billion through more than 460 deals from the year 2014 to till date. And because of COVID, it really, it really the income of these companies has went up because everything we have been doing earlier, we are doing with the cash has been now we are doing with cashless cards, all those online transfers and like e-commerce. So the fintech companies are more benefited in this uh, uh, way. In the emerging markets, fintech's adoption is much higher than the global average. And India, China are the two leading uh, fintech adoption uh, have index in the year by the year 2020. And the investments in worldwide fintech companies and in billions of years, some of the challenges faced by Indian uh, fintechs are small and inexperienced management team lacks the capability fewer financial economic resources that ever uh, appropriate scaling inadequate credit facilities and lack of startup exposure non-availability of established business models failure to attract talents in analytics domain and skillful personnel and lack of full compliance knowledge and absence of more reliable, transparent, secured, and speedily information processing and customer service. The fintech offers chances to expand these financial services to all members of the society, particularly the deprived and financially excluded through better access to information and lending. If the 5G, once the 5G has lodged into the by these fintech uh, companies. Next slide, please. Yeah, 5G and fintech effects on banking and financial sector. Many believe that the banks and financial institutions are going to adopt uh, fintech developments into their core business. Means core businesses like deposit, then lending, uh, giving loans, all these things, they are known as the core business, not uh, credit card, other things. They're all value-based. So this business also they are going to, that's what I said earlier in the slide when I was speaking. In the future, a person goes to a bank, uh, ATM, need not to meet anybody and he can take, make his own loan there. He can make his KYC. He can do all type of services himself. That is what uh, massive change will happen 
in the way of banks functioning. Most used fintech services are for especially transfers and payment, insurance, savings, investment, borrowing, then financial planning, and all this uh, uh, can be uh, done uh, the, uh, with the 5G wave oh, with the financial market, uh, fin fintech companies. And all banks in the future going to be converted into fintech. There will not exist any bank, and bank bankers are actually on the uh, deathbed, you can say. <clears throat> and as per NASCOM, India's fintech software market is predicted uh, to reach 2. Point, uh, uh, US dollar billion by the end of 2020. And India's age-old cash transaction-based economy has uh, also responding superbly to the fintech prospect, which is mainly because of e-commerce boom and smartphone usage growth. See, these... <clears throat> Especially these domains that fintech affects in banking and finance services are lending, deposit, investment, uh, remittances, clearing, settlement, payment, uh, trading advisory, investment management, insurance, and all these uh, uh, sectors are uh, <clears throat> will be covered, and and only fintech will be uh, used with the with the help of 5G will be definitely taking care of the entire uh, needs of the people in India. Some of the le uh, leading fintech companies are also effectively conducting their operations in India, like uh, Policy Bazaar. We might be receiving all the time mails. Uh, I don't know how they get our mail. They keep sending a uh, we have insurance policy, your car. Your, even our car is, we are not lodged anything, but they will, you have a car. Please, you take a policy. Uh, lending cards, pay sense, Moby Cake, Capital Flow, Bank Bazaar, Paytm, Phone Pay, Pay You, all these companies, they're all known as uh, uh, fintech companies, are looking forward to use 5G services to enhance, enhance their uh, business and improve the uh, end user satisfaction. Yeah, go, go, go to next slide, please. Actually, they have covered many of the topics I'm uh, leaving and uh, passing. Uh, then as COVID, we have already touched that the COVID-19 pandemic continues uh, to create uncertainty. Oh, even the year 2020, many fintechs are under the stress on a number of fronts, but uh, the broader economy shifts from respond to recovery, recover new opportunities uh, have been created for uh, some of the fintechs. A key question, is how fintechs may leverage their unique assets and skills to seize new opportunities in the future. It could be an opportune time to think big and act boldly in the 5G. So the 5G is going to turn or turn the uh, fintechs in future. So how fintechs are meeting COVID challenge, that is the most immediate concern, is managing through the current uncertainty that the, like the uh, rest of the finance system have gone into the overdrive to respond to the crisis by injecting uh, the mobile, uh, the uh, lot of uh, digital uh, trans transformation technologies. And they have been managed uh, to, uh, through the COVID period all over the world, uh, like insurance tech, uh, property tech companies, all those com companies were, <clears throat> have been doing this. Yeah, next, uh, disadvantages of 5G. It obstructs can impact connectivity, obstructions. Like suppose oh, there is an antenna and there is a big tree. Even the leaves can uh, stop its uh, electromagnetic waves passing through. And initial costs of rollout are very high. Like our spectrum auctions are very high because our India, uh, India I think 3.5 megahertz, uh, uh, they are doing it. And that is very costly. Limits of rural access and battery drain on devices of the mobile, uh, this thing. Upload speeds don't, do not match with the download speeds and detracting from the uh, ethics of the business. Yeah. Key market players today, who are the key market players or major players in the 5G infrastructure industry are Ericsson, 
that is Sweden, and UI technology, China, Nokia uh, from Finland, Samsung from South Korea, ZTE from China, and uh, among others. Those players account for the majority of the global 5G infrastructure market share. The impact of COVID-19 on Ericsson and Nokia uh, is very high as the majority of their vendors have 5G contracts in the US and the European countries in 20 and 21, the majority of the market will be driven by the aggressive 5G rollout plans by the Chinese telecommunication operators uh, in the European countries. Sir, conclusion, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm going last. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to conclusion. Yeah, like a lot of time is taken. Yeah. I'll come to, I think, the last uh, but one slide. Huh? Yeah, 5G and uh, FinTech conclusion. Huh? The disruptions created by these new digital revolutions are the possibility to reduce uh, the role and the significance of the existing banks. The bank started acknowledging that they require to come out of the institutional compliancy in the coming days. <clears throat> Banking and finance services will be like a layer on which the whole system is built on. It is no more monopoly or oligopoly market in the finance uh, and banking industry. To sustain and the growth in industry and to become more competi competing among them, banks have to implement 5G technology and collaborate with fintech companies. Otherwise, their survival will be like now recently you have seen a merger of one bank into other bank and their existence itself is uh, uh, doubtful uh, in the Indian uh, scenario. And thank you very much. Thank you for patient hearing. Very interesting, sir, Brahmariti Garu. Very important talk, actually, you have taken. And uh, of course, you are very intelligent, though at the fact end of this way, webinar, you have chosen a different topic. And that's yes, why sir, <laughs> it is really very good, very good. And at the same time, can I invite Morali to analyze his talk? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, please. <laughs> I, I'm giving you the opportunity, sir. It is a pleasure for me because I'm like Sisha. I learned so many things from them today. It really adds up to their uh, lectures. Let, let Morali. Yeah. Sir. I hope you have followed completely. Murli, sir. I think he's uh, not there. Briefly, you talk, sir. Murli, sir. Uh, hello. Sir, please. So, anything to be told? <laughs> Sir, already it is late. Sir, we <laughs> are you and Tisha, really. I learned so much from, from you. I, while you are speaking, <laughs> I've taken down the note. <laughs> no, it was a good interaction with all of you. So, we also learn by others. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you, Murli. No, yeah. So now it is term of vote of thanks. Actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, I request uh, our engineer Anjaya, uh, Anjaya sir, and I also thank Subhadri sir for conducting. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and having patiently sitting for two hours. <laughs> so, sir Anjaya sir, I request you to kindly to uh, propose a vote of thanks, sir. Is it there? Anjay is not there, sir. That's why I am taking part. Yeah, yeah, please. Then you go ahead, sir. Please, please. Respect to today's speakers, Professor C. Murali, FIE, former Vice President, IATE, New Delhi, 
Brigadier Dr. V.D. Abraham, FIE, former Vice Chancellor, Sri Venkateshwara University, UP. Professor G. Radha Krishna, FIE, Joint Honorary Secretary, IEA, TSC. And Engineer Brahma Reddyaru, the Chairman, IEA. And of course, uh, Engineer, Engineer Anjay Garu, Secretary, Fellow mm -hmm. at Fraternity, Representatives of Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, good evening to all of you once again. It gives me immense pleasure to perform the pleasant duty of progressing, processing, proposing vote of thanks. On behalf of Telangana State Center of IEA, and on my own behalf, I convey our sincere and profound thanks to today's speakers, Professor C. Murali, Brigadier Abraham, Professor G. Radhakrishna, and <coughs> for sharing their presentations. And also thanks to the dignitaries, past chairman, past honorary secretaries, committee members, corporate members, and others who made it convenient to attend this event. This is really very lively and very interesting, all the speeches. But the thing is, attendance is not much actually I thought of. It is almost some 40, 45 only. It did not exceed that. That's only limitation. I also thank the representatives of media for unsinted support to cover the proceedings of the event. Thank you once and all. Shall I complete with Janagaramana? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mahesh? Mahesh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh. Thank you. It's really lively. Very good. We are Mr. Anjay Garu. Anjay Garu. Ah, there, there was a good number of... Uh, yes, yes. 